Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use OAuth in Flask using the Flask extension Flask Dance. So Flask Dance is an extension that allows you to use OAuth to connect to various third-party applications. In these couple of videos, I'll be showing you how to connect to both Twitter and GitHub, but you can connect to other providers such as Dropbox, Facebook, Google, um, Slack, there are many others and Flask Dance can help you with those, but I'm only going to cover a couple. But before I get into that, I just want to show you my website, prettyprinted.com. It has Flask courses, so if you're interested in learning things more in depth, then you can go to prettyprinted.com and uh, view one of my courses because they're not like random videos that I do on YouTube. Instead, it's a sequential list of videos that cover a particular topic to help you go from not knowing something to knowing it well enough to use it in your apps. So for Flask Dance, I'm only going to cover GitHub and Twitter, but in the course, the Flask Extensions course on my website, I'm going to cover some of the other providers. So to get started, I need to install Flask Dance. So to install it, pip install Flask Dance dash dance and I'm also going to install the SQL alchemy version so I need the brackets and SQL a so I'm going ahead I'm going to go ahead and install that so I've already installed flask dance by itself and then I'm also going to install the SQL alchemy extension along with it and then I can get started with my app so the first thing I need to do is import flask so from flask import flask and I'll do the simple things for the flask app and then I need a secret key. So app config secret key. This is supposed to be a secret. And then what I'll do is I'll do the if name main part down here so I can actually run the app and it's going to be run in debug mode. So let me save that and then I'll open up my browser because I'll be using that in just a moment. All right. so. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and get started with the actual Flask Dance part and then connect to the providers that I'm going to use in this video, which are Twitter and GitHub. So first I need to import something from Flask Dance. So from Flask underscore dance, I'm going to import from Contrib and then I'm going to go to Twitter. I'm gonna start with Twitter. And what I want is I want two things. I'm going to import make Twitter blueprint and I'll show you how this is used and the next thing is used in a moment, and Twitter. And then for GitHub, is actually pretty much the same thing, so contrib, but instead of Twitter, I put GitHub, and then I'm going to import make GitHub blueprint. Then I'm also going to import GitHub. All right, so now I need to actually kind of connect to these and then create a blueprint around the connection. So the blueprint in Flask Dance is used to create routes for you automatically that will send a user to the third party site to log in and then another route that the user will be sent back to to kind of confirm the login. So Flask Dance is going to create those two routes for you. So the first one, I'll call this Twitter Blueprint. So you can call it whatever you want, but I'll call this Twitter Blueprint. I'm going to use the Make Twitter Blueprints function and what I need to pass in are two things. I need the API key for Twitter and I need the API secret for Twitter. And before I get into that, let me just do the exact same thing for GitHub. So GitHub Blueprint, I'm going to use the make GitHub Blueprint. So make GitHub Blueprint. And instead of an API key and an API secret, it's called client ID and client underscore secret for GitHub. So the, the style of them is exactly the same. It's just the parameter names are a little bit different. And if you look at the docs for Flask Dance, which will be included in the link below, you'll see what the parameters are for each type of blueprint. So I actually need the API key and the client ID for each one along with the secrets. So I'm going to go to Twitter first. And when you go to apps.twitter.com, you have to have a Twitter account, of course, but you can create an app. So what you're going to create here is an app and it has very little actually. It's going to have a name for you. So put in the name of the app, a description, a website, 
for this purpose, it's going to be localhost. So localhost port 5000 because that's where I'm building my site. And then this callback URL is a special URL created by Flask Dance that allows you to uh, call back to. So what this callback URL is going to be is it's going to be uh, the login or not the login, but the blueprint prefix that you specify slash Twitter slash authorize. So for this one, the URL is going to be, let me modify it a little bit. So it's login. I'm not going to have it be login. I'm going to have it be Twitter underscore login to make it different from GitHub when I use it. So I'll update the settings. So then I will get the keys and the tokens. So what I'm looking for is the API key. And make sure you keep these secret. I'm going to delete these after the video, so it's okay that you see them. But the API key and the API secret are given to you on the dashboard there. And then that's all you need actually to connect to Twitter. So now what you need to do is we need to go to GitHub and do something that's analogous. So for GitHub, you can register an application. So you just go through your GitHub profile and then go to the settings and you're going to go to developer settings and OAuth apps, register a new application, and you'll see that the form is very similar. So there's an application name, there's, there's a description, and there's a URL that's going to be localhost port 5000, and then a callback URL. In my case, it's going to be instead of login, it's going to be GitHub login. So those will actually be created by me, this GitHub login and the Twitter login, and then GitHub authorized and Twitter authorized are created by the blueprint. So that would make more sense once I actually show you. So really that's all you need to do. And then you can go ahead and get the client ID and then the client secret and put them in your app. And once again, those are supposed to be secret, but I'm just showing you because this is a demonstration. So now that you have the blueprint set up for each one, you need to register the blueprint on the app. So the first one I'm going to register is the Twitter blueprint. So app.register blueprint. And I'm going to pass in the Twitter blueprint. And that's made by Flask Dance. So we don't have to do much except for provide the URL prefix. And if you remember on the Twitter app dashboard, my prefix was Twitter underscore login. And then everything that comes after that will be taken be taken care of by Flask Dance. And if I do the same thing for GitHub, register blueprint, GitHub blueprint, URL prefix is going to be equal to GitHub underscore login. Okay, so that's all I need to do for the blueprint part. And now I can go ahead and actually connect to the app. So I'll create a routes, so app routes, and let's call this Twitter. And I'm going to define a function, Twitter login. And first thing that I want to do is I want to make this route so that when you go to slash Twitter in your app, it will automatically try to log you in. So first it's going to tell you if you are logged in. If you aren't, it's going to redirect you to the login page for Twitter, which is a page hosted by Twitter. So what I'll do is if not twitter.authorized. So what this is saying is that if there is no authorized user for whoever's using the app at the moment, I want to send them to the login page. So what I'll do is return redirect and then URL for and then I'll pass in a URL in just a moment, or not a URL, but a blueprint and a function. So I need redirect and I need URL for, and I'm going to pass them to twitter.login. So what this means is I'm using the Twitter blueprint. And if I look here, where is it? Looking for the Twitter login. And then what I'll do is I will find login for whatever the Twitter blueprint is and I'll redirect them there. All right. So these are built into Flask Dance. They're not actually something that I created. 
All right, so after that, what I want to do is I want to then get the user information if they are logged in. So if they're not logged in, they get redirected. If they are logged in, then they'll make it down to this line of code. And what I want to get is the user information. So if I go back to the Twitter API, what I'm looking at here is get account slash settings. So what this does is gives you some account information for the particular user. So let's see, there are some like always use HTTPS, protected, uh, time zone, and then what's most important is the screen name. So the screen name is whoever is logged in. And then I can look at other information. And of course I can look at different information for that profile, but for this one, I'm only going to use account settings. So that's really important because what I want to do is get account info. I'm going to use Twitter. So Twitter is what I inherited or imported from Flask Dance, and then Git. What this is going to do is it's going to perform a call on the Twitter API. And since I'm using my application credentials, I have access to the Twitter API. And I'm going to call a certain endpoint. And that endpoint is going to be account slash settings. So accounts slash settings. And then for the Twitter API, if you tag on JSON at the end dot JSON, it returns a JSON object for you. So then what I want to do is I want to make sure that the response is okay. So if account info dot okay, then what I want to do is I want to return some information. So I want to say something like your Twitter name is blank. Let's use the at symbol and I'll format with the Twitter account information. And that Twitter account information is actually going to be in this account info response. So I'm going to convert the response to JSON. So let's see, accounts info JSON. I'm going to call account info and then dot JSON. And then in this dictionary, which it is now because the JSON was converted into a Python dictionary, I can then access the screen name. So that screen name is the same from here. So if I wanted something else like language, I can use language instead. If I wanted sleep time, I can use that. But really the only important one here is screen name, which is screen underscore name. So finally, if it's not okay, I'll put something like request failed. All right, but we shouldn't see that. All right, so this is all I need for the Twitter one. So now let's see if everything here works. So I'll go to my app and first I need to start it. So Python app.py. And let me clear everything out because I might be logged into the accounts and I don't want to be. So, okay. So there's nothing on the index because I'm not I don't have a index route, but if I go to slash Twitter, it redirects me to a Twitter page. So I'm no longer on my app. I am now on a Twitter page and you see my app name here. So Flask Dance and it has the URL for the app, which is localhost port 5000 and a description. So that's why they asked you to put in that information. So now I'm going to log in with pretty print it and then I'm going to authorize the app. So don't save. And I put in the wrong password, I think. And let me try my email. So Anthony at Pretty Print It. I think it's admin at Pretty Print It. See, I should know this before making the video. Okay, so there we go. That was the right password. So now that I'm logged in, I can authorize the app. And once I hit authorize app, it's going to send me back to that callback URL. So I hit authorize app. It's redirecting me and it's telling me that the URL is not found. And that's because the URL that I created wasn't good enough. But if I go to slash Twitter, oh, so it was actually redirecting me to the homepage. But if I go to slash Twitter, it tells me your Twitter name is at pretty printed, which is exactly what I want. So the reason why I couldn't log in is because I was using the wrong username. It's pretty underscore printed, not pretty printed with no underscore. 
So the app, once you authorize it, it will redirect you back to the home page. And that callback URL that you specify, it sends information to that callback URL about the user that just authorized the app. So that's why my Flask app knows that I'm pretty printed because the Twitter API sent a request to that callback URL that I specified in the settings here. So let's see, where is it? That's slash Twitter login slash Twitter slash authorized. All right, so now I want to try GitHub. So I'm going to do the very same thing for GitHub. And the code for the login is actually going to be pretty much the same. So slash GitHub. And I'll call this GitHub underscore login. And I'll just do the same thing. So if not GitHub authorize, I'm going to redirect the user to the GitHub login, which will take the user to GitHub so they can actually log into the account. So account info is going to be github.git. And this time I need to know where to send the request for that. So unlike Twitter, it won't be account slash settings. For GitHub, it's going to be users. So simply slash user. And then you'll see the information here that I can get. I can get the login, I can get their Gravatar. But really what I'm looking for is their login because that is their username. So git slash user. Then I'll say if account info dot okay. Then what I'll do is I'll return your GitHub name is blank, and I'll format something, and that something is going to be account info JSON, and then I'm going to get the JSON version, convert it to Python of the account info. Then finally, I'll put it in the format. So account info JSON, and I'm looking for login. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to return request failed. Okay, so that should be it for GitHub. So now if I go to slash GitHub in my app, it redirects me to GitHub, which will allow me to log in with my username and password. And now it's giving me an error. So it's telling me insecure transport error. And that's because GitHub requires these requests to happen over HTTPS instead of just HTTP. So what I'll do is I will put a setting that allows me to do this in kind of a test mode. But of course, you wouldn't want to have this in production. So I need to export an environment variable that would be picked up by Flask Dance. And this environment variable is OAuth lab or OAuth lib underscore insecure underscore transport. And I want to set it to one. So now if I start up my app again, that's going to be picked up by Flask Dance and it's going to allow me to send insecure requests. So if I go to slash GitHub again, now I should have been logged in because I already logged in. It just had that error. So it didn't give me an error this time. So if I go to GitHub, it tells me your GitHub name is pretty printed. And that is my GitHub name. Um, so I know that I am logged in correctly on GitHub. So that was quite a bit to cover. And you know things can get a little confusing, but really that's the same process that you want to go through for each one of the providers. It's very similar. And it's similar because Flask Dance makes it similar. If you were to do these individually and use the API, then things would be different. But the whole beauty of the Flask Dance extension is that it takes care of a lot of these things for you. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to actually build a login system around these two things. In this video, I just want to show you how to actually connect. So if you have any questions about this video, you can leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Remember, check out my courses on prettyprinted.com. And that's it. So thanks for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.